I'm here today with our 1996 Itasca Sun Cruiser. My goal today is to change the AC system so that I can run the so I can run both ACs at once when I'm not just on generator power. So right now the way it's set up it's a 30 amp uh, RV system and if you're plugged into 30 amps it will only run either the front or rear AC. So right now there's this switch up here above where the microwave goes and it's a front a rear switch. You may have something similar to that. If you put it on the front it'll run the front. If you put it on the rear it'll run the rear AC and then if you want to run both ACs, it tells you right here, it has to be in the front to run both air conditioners. And that only works when the generator is running. So I did a little research and this one, this what this does is run a wire from directly from the generator on a separate 20 amp breaker to part of the switch. And so when the generator is running, you can get power to both air conditioners. I'll show you where that wire is. I was able to find a schematic, a wiring schematic for this RV model and that wire, it says, runs down this wall right here and then runs somewhere down here, comes back the frame and then comes back to the back and runs across. So back here's a water bay and then it runs across. Here's our Onan generator and that wire runs into this box right here. It's a junction box right here that it connects into. So it shares a common ground and then runs from here up to that switch all the way. I think it's a straight run. Now, I think the hard part of this project is gonna be rerouting this wire. My plan is to pull that wire and I'm gonna to try to route it. I'll show you where I'm gonna route it in a second, but there's right here on the side of the generator, you can see where there's two breakers. And it tells you on the front, you have a 30 amp circuit breaker here. And then this is your AC circuit breaker, purely for the rear AC, 20 amps. So really you have 20 amps of generator power that you don't have any access to. So my plan is, to run a wire from here in place of the AC wire. And we're gonna run that up to our power bay, which is right up here. We have our power, power bay right here. You can see here's a 30 amp, this is from the generator. And so what I wanna do is add another box right next to this with a 20 amp plug in it. So I've got my equipment here, I've got piece of wire I want to run from the back. I've got a box I'm going to add with a 20 amp plug, some wire nuts, and then this is, most of the wires are encased in this stuff, so I've got a, got some of that to run this wire in. And then I'm going to try to also reroute the AC wire and put this plug on that. So this plug will be in here, this will run to the AC, and you'll be able to just plug that right into the 20 amp generator power, or uh, you can also, like if you're at a campsite or just hooked up at home or something, you could also run a separate uh, extension cord to this plug and plug into uh, plug into a, a 15 or 20 amp breaker. I think a 15 amp would actually run it okay. Um, so you'll be able to plug this into an extension cord. If you really wanted to get fancy and you were at a 50 amp outlet, you could get a 50 amp splitter and plug half of your 50 amp into here and half of your 50 amp into your AC. Um, at least as, as I've studied it out, you could do that. So one of the big reasons I want to do this is because, uh, it's just kind of frustrating when you're in the summer and it's hot. Um, we have our kids along with us. And so you can only run either the front AC or the rear AC. So usually we'll run the front in the daytime and the rear at night when we're sleeping, but then it gets hot obviously in one part of the coach or another. So if we get, if I can get this set up, then when we're at a campsite, um, I, as I, I believe there are some campsites that won't allow you to run two cords, so this may not work everywhere. And that's where your 50 amp splitter could come in handy because you could run a 50 amp cord to your rig and split it out to run the two things. But this should give us the ability to run both. And on top of that, you'll also have another plug from your generator. So we'll just have a random plug in the bay that's 20 amps. And if we need the generator for something else, you can easily plug into it that way. All right, this is back in the generator bay. You can see the box here and we've got these wires. Now the RV is not plugged in and the generator, I don't have a, I don't have an inverter, whole system inverter. So there's no, no possibility of power to any of these generators, obviously not running. So, um, this, there's two different wires here. And the only, the only way that I can tell to tell which one goes where outside of pulling it from this breaker on the generator 
is that this wire that provides 30 amp is a bigger wire and then this one right here is a smaller wire and the smaller wire is the one that runs to the air conditioning so we're going to pull this loose We'll just put the cap back on here. And then this is a common wire between them. And again, the wire you're looking for, nice. The wire you're looking for is a smaller wire. And my wire nut just came apart. Hopefully that'll be easier to put back on. All right, so these two wires are the wires coming from the RV or from the generator. We're gonna keep those together. And then this one, this smaller one, should be the one that's going to our air conditioner. Now in a second, I'll take you in the back storage bay and show you where that wire runs. And again, the smaller one is the one we need. So we've got ground that runs to the box, our larger ground for the 30 amp, and a smaller ground. Okay, so now we got all those loose. Gives you kind of a rough picture. All right, I'll take you over here. So if we go in our back luggage bay here, this is the back side of where we just were. Here's where these come through. You can see these two coming out. These are the two that come through, the 30 amp and the AC one. The AC one is this one that runs across the coach, across the RV, over here, and it runs up over the water tank, up to the front, and then goes up to that switch. So that's what we're gonna try to get out. I'm not gonna leave this on for that whole process. It's likely gonna be an adventure. So here is a, here's the bay that's under the refrigerator is right here uh, inside and the switch is right over, right above the stove and microwave, which is right over where that vent is. So that wire comes down here and it drops through right, right up here. If you can see, zoom in a little bit, it's one of these, one of these wires up in here that drops down through the floor right here and then starts its path back here so okay right here is right across here so the wire comes down right here what i'd love to do is just drop this down and then if you look across the way where that light is over there that's actually the electric bay right there so if i can run this wire straight across that will be perfect i can put the ac um, wire right through this through way i got all these things at uh, just a local hardware store except for this wire. You probably could have gotten this there too But this wire cover I got at AutoZone and you could actually install this without this the piece of wire was just something that was laying around that I'm using but um, I think it is 12 to wire this wire loom or this plastic cover um, You don't have to use this but if you're driving a lot I certainly would because you you could easily chafe a wire and end up creating a short. You're running up the through the chassis here. So I would definitely use the plastic cover if you drive your RV very much. The vibration and rubbing could cause a problem. Just so you're aware, this is back in the generator bay. This, uh, this has a wire clamp on it. And you're gonna have to get that off to pull these wires out. You're not just gonna pull them out. So I had to pull this whole box loose and you got to get this um, wire clamp off and dig it out of the there's foam around here you got to dig it out of the foam in order to do that there may be a way to remove these but I couldn't figure it out so here's how I removed it but now it's off and the wires are exposed now I need to find another cable clamp Here's what I got to replace it. I'm gonna screw this in, and this should be better in the long term if I ever need to do anything with this again, which hopefully I won't. This should work better. 
Now all these wires are exposed for the moment. I'm not putting the cover back on them and I've got to pull those wires since I got this deep into it. So I went ahead and pulled my fuse because I really don't want this thing to be able to start uh, with these wires like that. All right, from the inside, here's where this came through. There's the hole into the generator box and all this uh, insulation was around it. So when we re-insulate re that, we can just get some spray foam. And this wire runs across and then it ran through this zip tie right here. And so I was able to slip it out of that zip tie. Now we're gonna see if we can get it up to the front. I got it. Here is the piece from back. This is what was running into the generator box from the air conditioner. So now this has to work because I don't think it's going to be very easy to ever get that back through there again. So we're going to run that right up through this front part. Um, instead of going, instead of going back here to the generator, it drops down right up here. We're just going to run it right up here and across over there to where that light is. That's the power box. By the way, there was a cover that goes over this. So I pushed that from the other side and now that runs right here. Now the one negative is that we don't have uh, the plastic casing all the way. I don't know. For whatever reason, the plastic casing did reach most of the way and now it doesn't. So, all right, I'm gonna run back around the other side real quick, but this is this is through, this is the AC wire running into the power box now. And I will probably just leave this this length for now. We've got it kind of long, but I think that's gonna be fine. Now I'll check out this. I bought this 20 amp, um, I bought this 20 amp plug, thinking that was a good idea. And now I, I'm wishing I would have got a 15 amp, I think, because if I want to plug this into a regular extension cord, it isn't going to work. So, I may replace this. We are, we'll go ahead and put this plug on. You put your wires through here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this back a little bit here. So cut it back to about here. And brown goes in the green screw, white goes in the silver screw, and black goes in the gold screw. When you're done, it should look something like this. You got white in your silver screw, the ground wire in your green screw, and black goes in the gold screw. And then this just slides together, only goes one way, so just slide it together, a little notch, make sure it fits in. Now, like I said, I did this with a 20 amp plug, but I'm, as I'm thinking about it, either I have to get an adapter for this to be able to run it on a 15 amp outlet, which should run an AC, um, a single AC, or get a 20 amp extension cord, either way. It's going to take adapters or something unless I change that plug. Right. Now we've got to run our other wire. Was finally able to get this wire through it's a whole different day i've had to put this project kind of on hold and this really held me up so here's the water bay and you can see where i maybe you can see i came through uh right up over the wheel well here it took me a long time to finally get the wire through from the back up over the wheel well so we came through right over top here and you can see in here where I went in, right over there, where these water pipes went through. So whatever access you have, that's the way it's gonna run in. And then it's going, from this bay, it's going right back there along the water tank, and it'll go back here to the generator bay. So finally, I was able to, 
to get that wire run up there. Okay, so here's my box and I think I've, I'm gonna mount it right over here actually. So I've just found four little screws that I'm gonna use that I had laying around to mount it. I just slid this plastic stuff over and this wire runs up and over my tanks, up through there and up over the wheel well. Right up there you can see where the plastic continues to run. It runs back over the wheel well and then back to the back and I have just one little more, one little piece of plastic to use for this back part. It runs right here, it comes through the wall, you can see where it runs up there and this plastic is actually not going to run the whole way. so. I will probably run this just on this back part and then if I want to add it further up at some point I can do that. I've got the wires loose in here and my new wire poked through the wall. Mount it to the side wall of the generator compartment and then this clamp goes on this outer part here. Holds that conduit in place. All right, now I'm gonna wire this up. Obviously, your, your copper wire is gonna go to the ground. So we'll just get it here with all these other wires. I'll just give it a little tug just to make sure it's good and caught in there. And then our white wire is gonna join our other white wires as well. I don't know if all motorhomes are the same or not, but here's what mine looks like. Coming out to the air conditioner is this red cap. It's got the yellow stripe on the black wire, and that one goes to its own black wire. And this is now hooked to the black wire running to my outlet up in the power bay. This one, this bigger one, is your 30 amp service that runs to your 30 amp plug in the power bay. It's a bigger cable, doesn't have a stripe on it. And then this one here is your, all your grounds go together and all your white wires go together as well. If you turned your 20 amp breaker off, it says 20 amp AC right here. If you turned that off earlier, um, don't forget to turn that back on. I think we are done in the generator bay. The cover's back on and the breaker is back on as well. I just want to show you again, here's my wire running in through the wire clamp. Now I still have to clamp it and then white wire to the silver copper wire, bare copper wire to the ground, your ground wire, and then your black wire your hot to the brass screw. And we're gonna mount that in there and that part will be done. There's the final product. I've added this box uh, right here with a 20 amp outlet on it. And then here is my air conditioner uh, plug. And I think, real quick, we're just gonna run a test with a, uh, like a night light or something to make sure that it works and then we'll go from there. We're gonna try it like this for now. We've got the RV plugged into the 30 amp. We've got the night light plugged in. Here is uh, generators running and the night light is on. We've got power. Let's just double check both outlets. Excellent, power both of them. Now, let's plug in our air conditioner. Okay, air conditioner is plugged in. Let's go inside. All right, we're inside at our front thermostat. And again, this switch needs to be in the front to make this happen. We don't really, aren't really gonna necessarily need to run this in the rear position um, anymore. Although you can if you want to, and it'll still work, but. All right, so we're here at the thermostat. We'll just pull that all the way down. It's not super warm in here. It is a little bit. We're going to leave that auto high. We're going to turn this to cool. All right, front air conditioner is running. Compressor kicked on. We'll go right back here. Now to our rear thermostat. We're going to switch that to cool. Let's see, we're fan auto down. And it runs. We're gonna let that run just a little bit, make sure nothing gets hot and everything works like it's supposed to. So I left quite a bit of wire on here on the air conditioner plug that's plugging in right here, uh, right here. And 
I left that just because I didn't want to cut the wire prematurely. I'm going to leave it for now. Um, ultimately, it'd be nice to make that just a, a real short pigtail so we don't have all this extra sitting here that reaches far enough to plug in right there. And then down here is where I run in my other cable. So you can run this 30 amp cable out and then run another extension cord that is strong enough to carry. Uh, you want a heavy enough one to carry a solid 20 amps, even though the AC really doesn't pull more than 15. And you should be able to power both your air conditioner, both your air conditioners at any plug-in site that has two uh, plugs in it. That's how you can wire in a second outlet and be able to run both of your air conditioners at the same time. Uh, if you have any questions, you can shoot them to me in the comments. And I may not be able to answer them, but maybe I can point you in the right direction. Thanks for watching.